Hi, in this video, we will try to introduce another trick uh, which will help us to apply fundamental theorem of calculus for more general cases. Well, again, I will start with uh, recalling the fundamental theorem of calculus part one itself. So FTC1 is what I will call it. The, it says that the derivative of integral a to x f t for a continuous function is equal to f of x. And um, here, uh, what is important, again, the integrating variable is only for uh, the integral. You won't see it in the differentiation and the result. The lower limit is constant and upper limit is exactly what we differentiate with respect to. We saw that if the uh, lower limit is a uh, variable and upper limit is constant, then we can apply what we call the trick one. But now uh, the cases we want to um, uh, deal with are um, a little bit different. Instead of upper limit being the exact same variable that we are differentiating with respect to, now we will have a function of that variable. You see here, the integrating variable is t. This is the, the function, the integrand. Lower limit is constant. Upper limit is not exactly the variable with respect to which we are differentiating. It is x squared. It is a function of the variable x. So, this right away tells me that I cannot apply fundamental theorem of uh, calculus uh, to this integral as is. So we have to do some work first. Well, if this was um, 0 to uh, x sine of uh, t squared plus 3t dt, well, let me call it gx, I, knew, I know what to do with the derivative of this guy. But now, instead of this x, we have um, x squared. In other words, uh, the, the integral you see here is g of x squared, or g o h at x. Then the derivative of this, you remember, this is chain rule, derivative of inner one times the derivative of outer one, you plug in inner one for that. Well, uh, derivative of x squared, we know it is 2x. Derivative of g, you see g is the function uh, defined by integral of uh, integrand from 0 to x. I know that fundamental theorem of calculus can be applied to that, and that will give me sine of um, x squared plus 3x. This is g prime at x, but what chain rule asks us to put there is g prime at x squared. So I will write g prime instead of x, I'll put x squared. And this is basically 2x sine of x to the power 4 plus 3x squared. How about this one? Again, the same trick works here. Well, again, you have to make sure that you see all the uh, points here. This is the integrating uh, variable. This is the integrand, which are both in terms of x. Uh, this is constant. The lower limit is constant. We are differentiating with respect to y. Upper limit is not y, it is a function of y. So let me call it h of y is e to the power y. And then if we have g y 2 to y of x to the power x dx, this is basically derivative of g of h of y or g o h at y. So the chain rule says that you find the derivative of inner one times derivative of outer one, but plug in the inner one. Um, here we get e to the power x prime. 
and you see that fundamental theorem of calculus here says that g prime at y is nothing but y to the power y so this will be uh, g prime at y is y to the power y but we have g prime at h y so it will be h y to the power h y well, plug in everything. e to the power x, derivative of y to the power x is e to the... Oh, sorry. This is e to the power y. Derivative of e to the power y is e to the power y. And h y is e to the power y to the power e to the power y. And from there, you see that this is e to the power y times e to the power y times e to the power y. Then this is e to the power y plus y e to the power y and this is e to the power y 1 plus e to the power y and that is the derivative of that integral with respect to y the last piece now here is okay uh, this time we have upper limit constant lower limit variable not the same variable as uh, the differentiation variable but a function of that it means that we have to first turn around uh, the uh, limits then uh, we can do uh, what we did for the other examples so minus derivative of the function appeared in the upper uh, limit times the integrand plug in the upper limit in there so it will be sine of x to the power 4 plus e to the power sine of x and you differentiate you get minus cosine of x times sine 4x plus e to the power sine x and that is the derivative of that function okay so this now gives us uh, hopefully it gives you enough uh, idea of how you can deal with the derivative of an integral going from a constant to a function of x f of t dt this is going to be derivative of that upper limit times lower limit evaluated at upper limit and that is the trick uh, that you can use there is one more that will cover all the possible tricks that we need to know for this uh, course